Good evening and welcome to Summer 2018 Formula Pi Season 4. I can't believe it, we've, we've done four of these now. This is, this is the fourth series we're going to be running tonight. So welcome everyone, thanks for joining us. Um, if you're new to Formula Pi, uh, tonight is just testing. So we've got uh, about 12 competitors that are ready to test their code and these are going to be people racing in the first series race which takes place in two weeks time and we're running testing tonight to make sure that they've got a, a good grasp of the code so they can work out any bugs, make sure that they are running as smoothly as everyone did last year. Um, I'm going to get straight on with things, we're not going to stick around tonight because we've got 12 robots to get through like I say, so whilst I remember where all the buttons are, let's get started and introduce the first robot that's lined up now that's having their two minute boot time. They are the Solar Cats from Albuquerque, New Mexico, uh, back for their second season of Formula Pi now. They came 17th last year with a bit of a mixed bag season. It was sort of good parts and bad parts. It was a bit of a mix, um, but it's great to have them back. They are from the College of Central New Mexico, I believe, uh, a team that also compete in Pi Wars, so we know a lot of their students quite well. So hello if you're watching, because um, I know that Kerry sometimes lets you watch this during lessons, so, you know. We know you're the best. We know you're great. We love you lots. So good to see you back uh, and good luck for tonight. They've got two minutes to run um, just to see how many laps they can get in. And yeah, excited to see how they get on. And I'm obviously joined by the wonderful Timothy Freeburn, who is on the other mic. Hello, everyone. Hello. Um, I've just turned my phone into airplane mode because I forgot so Ah, uh, Yes, actually, that's a very good point. I yeah. shall do that myself. Mm. Uh, so if I can figure out how to work technology. I know, right? We should probably do that before we start kicking off. Uh, there we go. He's, he's sorted. Lots of clattering about. So you can tell we haven't done this for a little while now and we're all a bit out of shape. <laughs> we are ready to go when you're Excellent. So Please uh, set the solar cats off on their first run, right, kicking off this season one. of Formula Pi. Okay, start light sequence, please. So for those that are new, the sequence of lights will go green, red, green, and then the robot will know that it's good to go and hopefully they'll manage to complete some good laps here. I think the lap record stands at about 13 seconds, that's set by the IT guy, I've not seen anyone beat that yet. Uh, I can see he's in the chat tonight, BK Taco, and good evening everybody else who's in the chat. Um, this is a bit of a tentative lap here starting off with the Solar Cats, but they're getting round. It's good to see, so probably going to look for about a 20 second first lap here, a little bit slow around that back corner. 22-2, good start. I haven't hit the wall just yet, but we're getting quite close and then edging our way ever so slowly around the corner. Uh, the team consists of students that are currently at the college and uh, working with each other to try and get around the track here. Um, on Twitter they are at CNM Hacker Space and uh, also Kerry has left his Twitter handle at my IT instructor, uh, who we obviously know from Pi Wars and the, t the other team that he brings over for Pi Wars. So, uh, so it's great to have you back. Um, their code experience ranges from no experience at all to intermediate level Python and Java, so a mixed team, which is great, so that means that the more experienced coders can help the, the beginners learn and get used to autonomous driving and using the sensors on the Raspberry Pi uh, and, and getting on with things really well. So this is good, looking good. Second lap, 32 seconds, a little bit slower than the first, but another 22 second lap. This is looking much more improved for the uh, Solar Cats. And I'll have to apologize as well. I might slur a little bit um, because I fell over a few uh, days ago. A days ago? About a week ago. Um, I split my lip and I'm currently relearning how to talk again. And uh, I'm a little bit <laughs> sometimes uh, when my lip gets in the way. <laughs> so I'm having to apologize. But this is good for the Solar Cats. Four laps now, about 20 seconds. The one 30 second outlier, but looking good. 20 seconds is, is a nice solid lap time. Like I said, lap record is about 13 seconds. Um, average lap last year was about 16 to 17 seconds. Um, I think the winners were managing about that last year. Um, it doesn't seem to be much different to that. This is a little more tentative around the corner, then suddenly speeding up again. 24 seconds for their fifth lap. So they've got two minutes now, so maybe one more lap they'll sneak in before That's it. Aaron calls they're, time. They're over. They're done. Is that it? That's it. Oh, I've, I've lost lost track of time already. Okay, swap robo over, please. So you'll need to stop the old timer there, Timmy. You remember your other job? Ah, yes, you are absolutely right. Yeah, you see? We have multiple jobs here. So there's myself on the mic, I'm Claire. 
Um, I'm at the Tufty on Twitter. Uh, there is the lovely Tim Freeburn at Bob Lescu uh, in the corner, who is on camera and timer duty. And then up on the track, it's Aaron, who is uh, responsible for her- herding the robots um, back into their pens at night time and making sure they're all tucked up nice and cosy uh, between their runs and making sure that they're uh, well fed and watered. It's an important job. Somebody needs to do it. And Aaron is the man for that job. Um, so we've got another robot lined up after the, the Solar Cats have started off with a good solid start here for this year's uh, Formula Pi. So next up, whilst I remember all my little jobs, because uh, as Paul from uh, Pi Moroni saw, I have quite a lot of little jobs to do whilst uh, this is running to try and organise things and click mouses and tap on keyboards and stuff. Um, so next competitor up. Uh, number two here tonight is number 72. It's the lovely Gordon and the IQ Audio team from Crick Laid in the UK. Uh, they have done two seasons of Formula Pi already. Uh, they came 10th in the first one and then made a final appearance last year and came in fifth. Um, so maybe this year they can go another five better and take the crown. Who knows? Um, it's great to have them back and they are obviously our, our season sponsor as well so please go and check out IQ Audio's website have a look at their wonderful audio hats and DAX for the Raspberry Pi uh, they are absolutely brilliant and if you get into the final and you get a top five you might actually win some of those boards as a prize uh, Gordon's been very kind and donated a lot of boards and hats for us to give out as prizes so I, I believe we have some prizes from Pi Moroni as well this year oh do we? Ooh. I was going to talk about them later. Seeing as, as IQ Audio are up now, I was going to okay. mention them and then Pimeroni. Okay, Tim spoiled. Just to let everyone know. Just to let everyone know, yes, Pimeroni have been very kind as well. We've had a lot of good uh, donations this year for prizes for people. Um, and uh, yeah, I'm excited. I'm, re- I'm really excited for this season, especially because there are a couple of extra exciting things happening this year that you've, you've seen bits and bobs of uh, on some of the videos that we've done. Oh, so I didn't notice that this was going to be such a problem. Ooh talking sensibly without lisping oh, because of my lip <laughs> right just pull all the stitches out mm. oh god yeah. don't I've already done that once this week I don't want to have to do that again <laughs> <laughs> right we're ready uh, I think we're still waiting for the two minutes okay okay, okay. got to give uh, got to give some time my... yeah. Tim is on the uh, earpiece up to Aaron who has a, a remote control I think you can okay. probably hear them can both you start light to sequence, please? Uh, on the old radios so here we go. Uh, green, red, green again, and we'll get IQ Audio away. Um, and they're off. Oh, straight for the inside line there. Proper aggressive move there from the start line to the inside of the corner. This is looking a bit faster than the Solar Cat team. Uh, smooth control. Um, let's see how they get across the line first lap. 16.3 seconds. Um, that is a nice, solid lap. Like I said, slap bang in the middle of the average, I'd say, for regular Monster Borg runs. Um, and this is looking like a solid start for the IQ Audio team. So for those that are new, and this is a, a thing uh, that you're not familiar with, uh, Formula Pi is autonomous racing using the Raspberry Pi. Uh, this is called the Monster Borg class. It's um, based around these robots that look fairly burly and beefy and they can bash into things and uh, cause lots of trouble. Um, we also have another class called the Raptor Ball class, which is going to be running later on this year, which has a lot more delicate robots that go really, really fast. Uh, they're not running tonight. Uh, we're going to run a testing session specifically for those robots during the season. Um, and we will be doing that later on this year. There's a video on our YouTube channel if you want to check them out. Just check out um, the Raptor Borg class, which is the slightly faster robots. And we'll show them in a bit more detail as the season goes on. Um, but for tonight, we're just doing Monster Borg. We've got 12 up. I can see Georges from Rasparis and Fiano has joined the chat. Hi, Georges. Um, yes, you are up tonight. You are ninth in the running. This is only the second robot, so we're early doors yet. Um, but you should be up soon. This is looking good for IQ Audio. Solid times, all sub 20 seconds. Uh, maybe they'll squeeze in another lap before Aaron chooses to herd them in. Uh, let's see how they do. Oh, some dart to the outside lane there. Maybe we're testing some random lane choice. 15 seconds though, fastest lap we've got there. Maybe they're testing some tracking algorithms to see how they can pick different lanes, because that's a strategy. Um, you can choose different lanes, you can choose uh, which lane you want to be in, and maybe that's what they're doing here. Uh, we've lost sight of the robot. Yep, I think you've got a sensor issue, Tim. Yeah, we, we do. I'm just about to check that. Okay, so Aaron's picked up the robot there for IQ Audio. Uh, it's looking good for them. Uh, good set of sub-20 second times. Um, 
that's a good start for IQ Audio. Hopefully they'll make it into the final again this year and we'll see how well they do. And maybe they'll win back some of their own prizes, uh, which would be brilliant if it happened. <laughs> so, how's it looking, Tim, from your angle? He's, he's looking very intently at the screen. There's clearly something, maybe a cat or something has distracted him from uh, what we're doing here. Split for the laser that's closest to you, does it look like it has a visual problem? So just trying to work out why the cameras don't change. Tonight we're using automatic cameras that are run through uh, laser triggers that set the cameras uh, off as the robots go past so that we don't have to control them. Uh, in racing we have manual editing. Ooh. So we'll do a manual editing. Manual alignment is going to happen. Uh, whilst Tim is upstairs doing a magical manual alignment with probably a large rubber mallet or something similar from his workshop, um, I will introduce the next person who's up tonight. Have I done the right thing? Who knows? I think I have. Uh, so next up tonight, we have a name that will be slightly familiar to people, but maybe not so much. Uh, this is Lambda Q Racing, who is the nephew of Lambda P Racing. So they've got a lot of Formula Pi pedigree. Lambda P is obviously two-time Formula Pi champion, uh, and Lambda Q is having a go this year on their own. So they are uh, from Hamburg in Germany. They have no coding experience at all. So this will be a brilliant learning exercise to get used to autonomous driving and all the sort of things that we love doing here. Um, on their sheet, they list their interests as chess, which I'm guessing is why they've got the image they have in the top right corner. So lovely to have you with us, Lambda Q Racing, and good luck for this evening. Hopefully, you'll be using some of that racing pedigree that you get from your uncle and absolutely smashing it tonight, seeing how we're going. Tim is still wandering around the office looking for things. Uh, this may take a little bit of time. There might be a bit of a pause here. So I've got to waffle um, and, and pace myself to give out information about things, as usually is in Formula Pi if there's a problem. It's my job to try and pad and uh, make things up as I go along. Yeah, I can still see Tim hovering around. He's about to go upstairs. Here's little footsteps ascending up the stairs to the track. So the track is above us. I sit in a little hole below the track. I'm like the Harry Potter of Formula Pi sitting in a cupboard under the stairs, um, trying to keep racing in order and let you guys know what's happening. Um, it's good to see so many regulars back in the chat. I can see Swinders, I can see Georges, uh, BK Tacos in the chat. I can see Dana Powers. Uh, I can see Alex Smith. Oh, hello, good evening, and quite a good bunch of people in the chat. So come and join us if uh, you're watching this on YouTube. There's a, a good chat session going on. Lots of people who are competing this year who've turned up to watch and see how things are going. Uh, I can see Tim is walking around on the track, wandering around. So in the Raspberry Pi community lately, uh, the next big event coming up is Raspberry Fields, which is happening at the end of this month in Cambridge in the UK at the Junction. Um, we should be going to that. Uh, both Tim and I have applied to do talks, but we haven't heard yet as to whether we're doing them or not. So it'd be great to find out. Uh, FYI, Raspberry Pi Foundation, nudge. You know, you know you love us. Let us in, please. Please, we love you. Um, I'll be talking about Formula Pi so I can give you a bit of an insight as to what it's like to run a live event, how terrifying it can be, how lovely it can be, and how horrible it can be at times. Um, so hopefully, if I get in, come along and listen to me waffle, and I'll probably be talking better by that point because my lip will be better. It won't be as um, covered in stitches as it is. Tim's giving me the thumb. Not that thumb. Okay, start right sequence, please. <laughs> so, Lambda Q Audio, whilst we've been waiting very, very patiently on start lines to get going, they are now off and running. Oh, I spoke too soon. That is the curse of the commentator. So the, the robots have a little bit of code in it that detects when the lights change colour. And it detects the first green light and then detects it from going red to green. But it looks like Lambda Q Racing are not going to get away tonight. Oh, that is a shame. Are we going to try one more cycle? Yeah, try a power cycle. Are we going to try a power cycle? Oh, we're going so... Sometimes Tim, uh, when he's feeling very kind and generous and he's not had a rough old day at the office, he'll let people have a second chance. Um, because, you know, it's this is a fun competition. We're not, you know, Formula One or anything. We're not trying to be Bernie Eccleston, bless him, or the new guy. What's he called? The guy with the great moustache, the Texan. Yes, chase. Um, 
think it is. Mm. Anyway, we're not trying to be like him. <laughs> we're trying to run something that's a bit more fun and a bit more entertaining and everyone will enjoy and have fun with. So we give people a chance and give people the benefit of the doubt, especially in these testing sessions. So for Lambda Key Racing, we're going to stick a, a power cycle on and uh, give them another two minutes to boot up or try one more time. After that, we'll probably call it a day for this particular robot. So when it comes to proper racing, we do five robots at the same time. Uh, and it can be pretty chaotic to keep track of what's actually happening and who's going where and doing what when. Um, I imagine the Raptor Borgs are going to be even more horrendous when they run. Um, it's just going to be a nightmare to keep track of. I might just sit here silently and let you guys work it out. <laughs> it's probably going to be easier. Okay, than... cycle through the lights. Okay, so we're going for a second start here for Lambda Q Racing. It's going to cause me problems if they're in both in the same race. I'm never going to be able to keep track of who's who. Oh, that looks like a non-starter for Lambda Key Racing. That is right, swap the robot out, a shame. Please. So on that, we will swap out uh, the robot for the next robot who is due to go. And, uh, and Obviously, we will check uh, the code, and if uh, it turns out that it's our mistake, uh, we will run you tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow evening instead. Oh, yeah, I forget. We're back tomorrow as well. So we're doing half the robots tonight, half the robots tomorrow, because we've got this year quite a lot of different competitors actually we're fairly 20, flush with people who wanted to do this this year 24 tonight or sorry 24 for for this testing session mm -hmm. so, yeah. oh 23 i've got on my list is there an extra yes. one sorry uh <laughs> there is actually an extra oh. one um however their code didn't quite make it in time for the testing session okay oh controversial yeah um but uh because they are doing a, uh, a complicated uh, uh, set of code, um, we will potentially run them uh, for a test session separate to to this, and uh, just send them results of that. Okay. Um. That is, if if you're doing something like you have a, an artificial neural network or something along those lines, something that's a bit uh, unique, then uh, we will make. Uh, all sorts of uh, exceptions for you yeah because it is it is a difficult thing for people to actually do so it is and we, we appreciate the the extra effort people take so we like to um, help out where we can and like Tim said any problems we do try and help out with logs and debugging problems and making sure that people get the most out of the racing when they do uh, take part because it's yeah it's not an easy thing to do and I have huge amounts of respect for people who uh, do this and try this because it's really hard. I'm a coder by day and uh, yeah, I find it incredible uh, the the sheer lengths that people go to sometimes to get their code to do something spectacular. Um, so, are we ready for next? We've put in the next robot. It's had uh, a boot I think we're up. still waiting for the two minutes. I need to do my spin view though. So we should. We're, uh, view, I yeah. should. Mm. So next up, we have Formula Pi Veteran, I think he won't mind me calling him that, in the nicest possible way. It is Swinders from Waterlooville in the UK. This is his fourth appearance in Formula Pi. After attempting to make the final uh, for the first three years, he finally did it last year, made it into the final five, and actually came second, was not far off winning and beating Lambda P. So we've gone from a ninth to a twelfth to a second place. So Swinders is looking good this year to continue his form and keep going with the amazing form he's shown so far. He's one of maybe three uh, drivers who have been in all four seasons uh, that we're going to be seeing over the next two nights, I believe. Um, so yeah, lovely to have you back, Swinders. And I can see you're in the chat as well, so hello. So I'm getting the thumb. Spin view has completed. Start light sequence, please. Yeah, Tim gets very keen. I forgot the okay. Um, <laughs> Swinders says, first rule of Raptor class, you don't speak about Raptor class. <laughs> we do um, and I meant veteran as experienced uh, you know I'm, I'm a veteran of <laughs> Formula Pi commentary now and I, I definitely have grey hairs and I do look like I've been beaten up this week and that is not a good start for Swinders no, it's not. that is light problems are we going to power cycle please yeah Tim's getting on the old microphone uh, to power upstairs cycle it, please So today is all Monster Borgs. We're not doing Raptors today. We will probably do Raptors during the season at some point. Uh, it, that was always going to be an experimental class. 
we're not going to run it all the time uh, this is going to be a test season really for that to see if it's viable to run it as a race as far as I understand uh, yeah there's there's definitely all the intention to run it as a race um, we're not quite ready to do that just yet uh, but we are very close we're just uh, ironing out some bugs with uh, the uh, speed detection at the minute uh, but uh, what we should be doing is is running um, uh, running some tests on on that uh, probably in about uh, we're thinking about four weeks time if we if we can so uh, two weeks time we should have the code out to uh, to everyone the final bits for uh, for everyone to play around with and uh, then we'll go through the usual submit your code and uh, and we'll do a uh, we'll do a test run. So how many Raptor Borg uh, competitors do we have? We will have five for the first. Okay. Uh, for the first run. Are uh, they... I'm, I'm catching up. This is like... <laughs> me and Tim have not spoken about this. So this is like... You're, you're now live catching the planning that normally goes on. Um, are there people who are taking part in Raptor taking part in Monster as well? Is there a uh, Yes. Yes, there is. Uh, uh, I think... Correct me if I'm wrong. I think everyone is uh, who's in the Raptor class is actually doing a monster class. Oh. Um, obviously, it uh, it will be a requirement for uh, for Raptor entry that you will have uh, successfully completed a Monster Borg season. Um, but uh, uh, for for this one, because we're we're still doing testing, we don't want to sort of. Uh, uh, charge people for it and and run people for the for the uh, for the Raptor series until we're we're happy that everything's running right. I think that sounds fair. Yeah. Right. Now we've caught up on housekeeping. Is Swindus ready to go again? Uh, I hope so. Yep. Yeah. Okay. Cue the cycle lights. Ooh. Ooh. We will check this out again. Right, so okay, we will have a look and we'll over, be please. in touch. Uh, if we can work out what it is, and uh, it's, if it's our fault, you'll get popped into tomorrow night's pool. Um, but as it looks for the minute, that is a non-starter for Swindon. So not the ideal start to Formula Pi Summer 2018. Um, hoping it's our fault secretly. Yeah. <laughs> And it can be there. there is oh, it can. A lot it going can on. be. <laughs> there is a lot. Uh, a lot we are all very busy. Um, okay, so next up, let's find what I need to do next. So next up, we have another. I think it's safe to call him a regular now. Uh, we have the IT guy uh, from Independence, Oregon. Uh, this is their third season for Formula Pi. Um, coming second in the first season they entered in. And then 14th last year after some pretty bad results just didn't quite make it as, as good as the first season. However, Jamie is back. He's got a fantastic new lid, which I've seen on Twitter, but I don't think it's quite made it to our office yet. It's got no, googly eyes and everything. I, I approve massively. Um, so can't wait to get a photo of that and get it on top of the robot. And I can't wait for you all to see it because it's absolutely fabulous. It's got googly eyes. We put it on Twitter. Um, we're at Formula Pi underscore. Go and follow us if you want to see some of the goings on of the office and some of the prep we do for racing and stuff. But yeah, it has googly eyes. I mean, you don't really need to know any he's, more than that. He's sending uh, a couple of spare googly eyes just in case the uh, the ones that are stuck <laughs> on at the minute fall off. So are I'm we really tempted in... to stick lots of them on. But I wait. <laughs> are we planning to have like pit stops so that if the googly eye does fall <laughs> off, he has to pull in, have a googly eye assembled, and then pull back out again in kind of like a three second Ferrari style. <laughs> pit stop that sounds like a really good idea I think we should probably we should, do that we should incorporate that absolutely in I think we should be doing that uh, it sounds like a fabulous <laughs> thing to do can we can we do that yeah okay <laughs> probably not <laughs> I could run upstairs and have like a, a little little tiny miniature air gun for getting the wheels off <laughs> you know like a, a little really tiny one I'd love a tiny one it'd be so good <laughs> you can tell it's been a long week okay uh, did I do spin view? I did we're, spin view. We're just having a problem with uh, six seven actually starting. Oh, so good uh, lord! We're just going to uh, reseat the SD card on the back of it and well, power cycle that again. As you were, people. Um, the testing rounds always seem to have lots of problems like this, don't they? Yeah, they do, but they're they're quite good um, once they do finally get going. Uh, they are good. So let's see how we're doing. 
see if we're on. Just incidentally, Tim, mm. whilst we're waiting, uh, this is more of a technical thing. I've got some feed stream issues. Uh, there will be a lot more technical talk on the testing sessions as well because this is testing for us as much as it is for you. Oh, Tim's coming over. This is serious now. I'm getting bad frames again. Have we got all computers off and have we turned off the... Um... Could you show me OBS, please? We're uploading at... Oh, 3,000k a second. Um, you know, it's probably fast enough. I don't know if it's... YouTube's just hungry. YouTube is very hungry, om nom nom. Um, also, incidentally, I don't, I don't know if anyone can hear as well, in, in the background, you might hear some kind of bangs or kind of funny noises coming through the wall. Um, we've had some new neighbours move in uh, on the industrial estate. We've got some uh, new neighbours next door and it is a CrossFit gym. Uh, tonight, thankfully, there is no dubstep on, but but more often than not, they do play the dance music that is uh, popular in this sort of establishment. I'm, I'm not oh, a frequenter of the gym. Backing track for, for this. Yeah, I know, but I'm not a big fan of... <laughs> well, you know, I like dubstep at the, at the right times. It's not six o'clock on a Wednesday. That's not dubstep time. Really? Is there a dubstep okay, time? Okay, swap the robot over, please. So... The IT guy, we are going to run you tomorrow night, I guess. Uh, we'll obviously check what uh, what the problem is. Oh, and, this is uh, clearly going to be much quicker testing than I gave it credit mm. for earlier on. I thought we were going to be here for hours. I thought I was going to miss Maker's Hour. I thought I was going to be, you know, stuck longing for my dinner. Um, but it looks like we're rattling through these fairly quickly, as it seems. Uh, so, find me right windows. I'm getting used to everything again, trying to find all the buttons that I have to click and all the things I have to do, because this is testing for us. Uh, Aaron has tripped the timer, you might want to restart that. So, another Formula Pi, now regular, back for their second series. It is Pico Hulkenborg from Oxfordshire in the UK. Uh, last year came 21st in the series after a couple of really, really difficult rounds. Um, but Pico provided a fantastic spreadsheet uh, for me to use during the finals to uh, live update everyone as to where people sat in terms of what they needed to do and that was absolutely fantastic so we're really pleased Pico's back again this year um, looking for some better results hopefully this year I've got everything crossed for you um, and Pico Hulkenborg it's just great to have you back we enjoy the Hulk lid I like anything that's a bit of a pun and a play on our either our name or a film or something you know I love puns big pun fan um, so hopefully fingers crossed for Pico this year see how the performance goes I had to uh, relocate your uh, lightning strikes that were on the top of your lid uh, because they didn't quite fit in our uh, our new um, arrangement for the uh, for the lids. For the lid rack. Yeah. So actually, if anyone's thinking of having a three D lid, which uh, I, I know a lot of people are, uh, can you try and keep away from the edges, um, especially the edge away from the SD card? Uh, and that way I can I can actually mount them uh, in my in my shelf um, but uh, I, I hopefully I'll put them in a in a decent spot but um, I doubt you'd even see that on the camera to be honest uh, it was not. it was a small move yeah mm. that's interesting so but, you've, uh, you've had you've made a new I, rack then yeah yeah did you go on, but, did you, uh, timber do that or did you do that be honest <laughs> I did that <laughs> <laughs> Tim has fantastic, beautiful lathe and mill, uh, which he wants to use at every opportunity. So clearly, that was another any excuse. Any excuse, to get it out. <laughs> Bridge port out on some wood, just cutting little slots in a piece of wood. Okay, start light sequence, please. So hopefully, Pico can break this run of uh, poor form that we've had tonight, either technical or otherwise, with a little break dance and a bit of a spin. We're off. That, that was a wonderful start. Great moves uh, from Pico on the uh, start line. Bit of a disco dance and we're off. Let's see how we do. Thinking about getting around that first corner. A lot of break dancing. This is... This could confuse people. This is, this is a dazzling strategy. Um, Swindis asks, is that the rack we saw on Twitter today? Yes. That is the rack you saw on Twitter. Um, 
it's something that Tim uh, uses to organize the lives because obviously we have sort of 20 or 30 competitors and it's really tricky to keep track of all the code and all the SD cards so we have a little rack to keep them all in and that, that is that um, yes because he was holding your lid wasn't he Swindles when he was doing the uh, he looked really mm. intelligent and intent he was probably just checking Twitter <laughs> definitely was just checking Twitter <laughs> And uh, nice to see the Yeti Borgs there in watching on. Oh, my tummy's rumbling. Maybe that's the low rumbling you can hear is my stomach rumbling because I'm quite hungry. I forgot yeah, to eat because I used to eat before Formula Pie, so I didn't get tummy rumbles. And tonight I forgot. Um, so Pico, We've got to get back into the swing of it, don't we? Yeah, I know. I need to get back on the uh, on the routine. So let's see if Pico can get round for a lap here. Close to the finish line. Yes, that seven second one will be the break dancing that we saw at the start. The 84 second one is a, a more representative lap, I think. Quite tentative around this first corner. Having a good old think about where to go. There we go. <laughs> Swindon says, I think I can see Twitter on his screen. I know, right? Like. <laughs> Genuinely, I know, right? <laughs> it probably was. So that's it. I think I can see Aaron shuffling in his chair. He has got up to retrieve him. Uh, so that is it for Pico. One lap, 84 seconds. Got round. Hopefully, we'll see some improvement over the next few weeks from you, Pico. I've got you. I've got your number. I'm watching you very closely this year. All right. So let's move on to the next competitor. I am feverishly deleting things out of my little spreadsheet. Where are we at? We're about halfway. Should I do some sponsors or should I do that at the end? Yeah, why not? So obviously every year we wouldn't be able to do this without the lovely help of, of you guys entering the competition and, and being as fantastic as you are and taking part and being immense fun. Um, but also we have some wonderful sponsors on board who've helped us out uh, through various stages of the competition. Oh, that is... I've set off spin view rather than doing the sponsors. <laughs> I dragged I dragged the video onto spin view and it booted spin view. That is, ah. I can tell I've not done this in a while. Not as smooth and as polished as normal. Uh, oh, I dragged it. I should actually drag it onto the drag here thing. Oh dear. Um, you may have killed the stream by doing that. Have I? Uh, can you see me switching cameras? Yes. Okay, that is good. Uh, there's an exception. Obviously, Aaron has handling his exceptions, so uh, we're very lucky. Thank you, Aaron, for handling <laughs> your exceptions correctly. Try catch for the win. Um, try catch ignore. <laughs> <laughs> try catch ignore. Keep if, going. if Claire, try catch ignore. Uh, just ignore, actually. Don't even bother trying and catching. Just 100% ignore. Well, that was lucky. Good news. Uh, sponsors, yeah. Let's let's drag it onto the right thing. Crikey, God, I only work here, don't I? Formula Pi sponsors for this year, obviously the lovely, lovely people who helped us do this, along with you, wonderful contestants. POSIX are first up this year. Um, again, back for a second year, providing their wonderful GPS location boards. They will be used heavily in the Raptor Borg series. Uh, they will be a, a key component to that series. So looking forward to having them back on board again this year. Second up, my Pi. Jacob came to visit us today. Uh, was his usual uh, full of banter self it was great to see you again Jacob uh, they're on board again for this year check them out for your after five goodies uh, Electromaker um, the hardware hacking community at electromaker.io check them out for hardware tutorials and all sorts of lovely things as I mentioned earlier on IQ Audio all of your audio needs for the Raspberry Pi hats, DAX etc etc uh, there's surprises from them this year uh, check them out too and finally the lovely Pi Maroney uh, Paul and the team in Sheffield upon Sea are back again for a second year and it's great to have them back and it was great to have Paul as a guest in the final doing commentary with me it was lovely having a second voice helping me out um, if you want to sponsor Formula Pi check us out info at formulapi.com or drop us a tweet, Formula Pi underscore is our handle, um, or Pi underscore Borg if you want to check us out for the main Pi Borg account. Um, yeah, a bit amateurish tonight. I apologise for that. We are ready. Uh, okay, good. Did I do a spin view? No. You accidentally did spin view. I accidentally so. did spin view and then cancelled it. Lols. Um, 
Is this right? I don't even know where I am. Who am I? Next up, new contestant for this year's Formula Pi. It's Pirat. I'm so enjoying that. It's another good pun. Um, they are from Paris in France, so another French entry for us this year. It's great to see uh, lots of Europeans getting involved. Even after Brexit, we still love you guys. Uh, we're we're not you know we're not happy with the state of things. But enough of that. We're here for racing or Brexit. So Pirate are here for their first time of asking. Uh, great logo. I mean, I'm enjoying the skull and crossbones in a triangle. It's brilliant. Uh, it's so good. What can I say? I haven't read their bio. I probably should have done. That's probably naughty of me. And I will do so this week and I'll revise really well and I'll get my exams sorted and become a Formula, Formula Pi professional. Let's go. Okay, start light sequence, please. So first season here for Pirat. Let's see if they can get away. And they are off. Uh, I can hear... Oh, I felt that. I, I, I felt that. That was straight on uh, through the wall and off out into the fence. Nope, they're upside down, they're off. They are making a move now. Um, and, oh, my tummy's rumbling so loud. I'm sure everyone can hear that. <laughs> I'm so hungry. But, pirate here, doing a little dance a la Pico in the final corner there. Getting caught on the wall, but still moving. And away they go. Uh, Tim. Could I ask a favour of you, please? Yes, certainly. Would you mind shutting the door? Because I can hear the robots before what's happening on the screen, and it, it gives it gives it away somewhat what's happening. Thank you kindly. Although it's the summer, um, we'll get sweaty hot in here. Um, I won't. I'd rather not be able to hear them. Also, the CrossFit. I can hear the CrossFit going on. I can hear people being fit in the next room. I don't want that. <laughs> we like Makes pies and guilty, beer is that the <laughs> yeah pies and beer and computers over here that's what we like thank you very much you can keep your weights and your burpees to yourself uh, 17 and 18 seconds for the second two laps despite a slow first start crashing into the first corner we've got some good average times going on now 17 seconds 18 seconds it's looking very promising for the Pirat team uh, I appreciate a good pun so thank you um, to everyone who's put in a pun name this year uh, I, I love you, love you all to bits. Uh, it makes me chuckle when I get to read the list of people coming up. Um, there are some really good ones. I don't want to spoil them because they're, they're brilliant. I think there's three on the trot tomorrow night that I'm really pleased with. Um, but they're so good. They're absolutely brilliant. Two dead 18 second laps. Talk about consistency from Pirat here. Absolutely smashing it on the consistency front. Can they do? A third lap at 18 seconds. Okay, swap robot, please. Oh, you're not going to let him go. Yeah, he's going to let him go. <laughs> oh, so close. That could have been three for 18, but not quite. And Aaron has tripped it, and now he has to herd the robot. Uh, I think Swindon has spotted a spelling mistake in your sponsor's video. Oh. I'm going to... Sorry about that. Uh, who would that be from? Sponsors. So that looks all right to me. Am I missing something? I can't. I, I'm not very good at spelling. Um, I usually use a spell checker pretty much all the time. U W five. Yeah, despite my job being marketing at some level, <laughs> um, you know, spell checkers for me. Right, where are we at? Ooh, warming up the next robot now. Uh, after that wonderful display by Pirate. We have a mystery team. Not sure who they are. Who are you? Number 73. Uh, come in, 73. Uh, please send us back your uh, registration form with your name and team name and stuff and where you're from and what you do and how awesome you are because I don't know anything about you. Um, all I can tell is that by the number... You were someone who entered probably in the second season of Formula Pi and you've deferred your entry until now. So it'll be really exciting to find out who you are and what you do and where you're from. And uh, yeah, I'm excited because you're only plus one on IQ Audio. So I'm, I'm hoping uh, you were someone from that era of Formula Pi, second season in the 70s, I'd say. Yeah, from uh, totally my back right catalogue of knowledge. Yeah, yeah I'd say. Hmm. Do you say I have nothing to say? No, you know. I'm trying my best. 
You need to learn the more waffle, don't you? Yeah, I'm, if I wasn't so tired or, or busy, um, I would be definitely okay. on for doing uh, some more waffling. I don't have a lot. What are we? We, we are trying a restart. It uh, Good Lord, hasn't this is, booted up. Yeah. Is every, everyone's tired tonight. Ah, I have I have somebody in the chat who's owned up to being number 73. I can see a user called Derek Crago, or Crago, um, who is in the chat, who says they are number 73. Right. You, sir. Where you, are you from? <laughs> where, yeah, where are you from? I'm, I'm going to go on. I'm doing a bit of social snooping now. Name? So... <laughs> Uh, I'm I'm off. I'm looking for you to try and find who you are. Um, <laughs> I'm I'm trying to find out who these people, who new people are. It's exciting. Aha! Uh-huh. I've found you on Twitter. Oh, you haven't tweeted anything. I'm I'm looking. Or if you can come in the chat and tell me that's that's uh, that's the easiest thing to do, right? Um, I'm having a, a dig around the internet, seeing what I can find. Yeah, you. Yeah, I mean, so so my job is a little bit of marketing and a little bit of software development. So I'm kind of I spend a lot of time on social media for my job, which is people would think, yeah, that's great fun. It's not. Um, <laughs> it's hard work, but I can do a quick search to find out who's who, and what they're doing. So yeah, Derek, please, if you could. Uh, send in your your registration form with your name and where you're from and uh, we can tell everybody how awesome you are Um, that's my job and if I don't have anything to say about you I tend to waffle and tonight my waffling is not on point I need to uh, I need to have a good night's sleep and a bit more coffee I think to be on waffling form I think that code's not booting um, so we might have to uh... it's another one for the investigation pile the ever growing investigate this robot pile Oh, my mistake. Aaron has just told me that it's ready for the lights. Well, so, uh, yes. Derek, Derek's just come in the chat and said my code might be completely broken. <laughs> I'm From what we're seeing here and from what we're hearing up on the racetrack, it appears to be fine. Okay, um, could you start the light sequence, please? So, we'll get on the way uh, for Derek and his robot. Let's see how we do. And I might be retracting back to... Agreeing with Derek, I think it probably is completely broken. Wow, what a show tonight. Uh, I wasn't expecting this many non-starters. Wow. Obviously, as we said for every other non-starter, we will investigate to make sure that it's not a a robot issue, that it is in fact a code issue. And if it is a code issue, we'll try and help you out and make sure that um, we can resolve it so that your robot can get going. Because it'd be great to see you racing and moving around and taking part and um, yeah. We'll, we'll investigate, let you know. If it is our, if our fault and not your fault, uh, we will pop it in tomorrow night's pool, which might be growing ever larger. <laughs> it could be. As the evening goes on. 100 robots tomorrow night. No. Yeah. Um, not it, really, but... No. Mm. <laughs> okay. Let's move on to robot number nine for this evening. Uh, somebody else who's in the chat who I already know is here and is the other... Uh, quadruple Formula Pi entrant tonight, making their return hopefully back this year for vengeance it is Ras Paras del Infierno from Madrid in Spain over 10 years coding experience for each of them uh, they've been in the three previous seasons of Formula Pi, getting a third, a fifth and then an eighth last year narrowly missing out on the elimination round for the final thing that we had um, I seem to remember that it was a bit of a torrid year and you got stuck on the wall and batteries fell out and it was just circumstances that played against you not necessarily the code or the quality of the work that you've put in because it was phenomenal um Rath paris one year tried a neural network and tried to get some proper ai learning in there and that was fabulous to try out and see that running um and so hopefully this year we'll see you back in the final we'll see you back doing what you do best um does the code base have any changes related to light detection? I am not sure on that one. Uh, Tim has just momentarily left the room to deal with something. Um, so I will have to ask him when he's back in the room. Um, otherwise, it's just me left here now in control. Um, I could run riot. I could destroy things. I could set the whole place on fire. Um, we could all go down the pub. No one fancy a trip to the pub. 
Uh, but as, as I'll have to ask him about the code base changes. Uh, he will be the man to ask. Well, Aaron's the one to ask about that, but he's a long way away upstairs. Um, and I'd have to run outside and shout, and then it would come up on the border mics, and all hell would break loose. Yeah, I definitely am grasping at straws. That's pretty much been my week, though. How did you know, Swinders? I've been, I can't actually eat and drink properly at the moment because of my mouth. Um, <laughs> so I am. I've been grasping at straws all week, metaphorically and physically. Um, Tim, I have a question. Yes. Does, now we've returned to the room. Um, does the code base have any changes related to light detection this year? Uh, I believe not. Okay. I can check that with Aaron. I thought that uh, might say. I don't think it has. No. Okay, cool. Set off. Raspberry Sun Fiano, please. Okay, start the light sequence, please. For their fourth season in Formula Pi now. Hopefully, they'll make the final again this year. And they're away. Yay! Oh, straight for the inside line. So aggressive. Wow. Straight off the line and straight to the inside, and they're off and around they go. This is going to be a quick first lap. I wouldn't be surprised if this was sub 15. Oh, close. 15.77. That is not a shabby first lap, though. Good effort from the Rush Crescent of Yeno team. Clearly setting their uh, sights on the final already this year. Let's see how we do. Nice tight lines around the corner. I remember last year that uh, I think it was George or it's maybe uh, the Halo Girls um, who had a ridiculous line around that last corner that was so close to the rubber, the wheels touched sometimes. I think this year they just dialed it back a bit, which is nice to see. Um, but two lap times that are pretty comparable here. Even quicker, 15.59. This is looking really good for Rasper Stan Infierno. Let's see if they can keep this consistency going for the entire two minutes. Oh, they can. Look at that. Within 0.2 of a second of each other, pretty much. There are thereabouts. Uh, this is looking great for us, Preston and Fiona. So good to have them back. It's great to see you again competing and running. 15.96. Brilliant times here. Really, really good. So maybe we'll get another two laps in. Maybe three at a push. See how we go. I imagine Aaron will let you run for the last one. I think this last corner camera is a little bit out of focus, Tim. We might have to go and fix that at some the point. The IQ Audio... Camera or the... Uh, I'll tell you which one, I mean... The next camera. The the low angle one that points at the wall. It didn't trigger actually that lap. 16.17, so a little bit slower out of the lap, but I think that is probably two minutes, I guess now. Okay, it's what, robot please? Oh, yes it is. Again, Aaron will let it go. I think it was a bit quicker than him. <laughs> Catch it on the repeat, but that is good for uh, Raspberry Stanfiano. That is a good set of lap times, all within about 0.5 of a second of each other. Uh, best one there is 15.59, so it's looking really, really good for that team. Great to have them back again, like I said. It's, uh, it's lovely to see the regulars coming back and sticking with us. We really appreciate it. And the new guys, obviously, we love you all equally, because you're all awesome. You chose to do this in your spare time, which is mint. All right. So the final three tonight, we have three new teams that are brand new to Formula Pi, uh, never having raced before, so this is good. Uh, Tim, your co-patriots. Wow. We have Megawatt from Sydney in Australia, uh, yeah. and they are expert in uh, XLVBA uh, for more than 10 years. There's another dot, dot, dot there. There's an ASCII translation issue in the uh, oh, text dear. file, so we have uh, need to root out that issue. <laughs> um, so it's great to have Megawatt on board. I'm loving the lid. That is a proper nice logo. Uh, also, good introduction of the, the pie in the T. I'm oh. appreciating that. It's good. Uh, little Formula Formula One esque car there. Um, props to obviously Daniel Ricciardo for winning Monaco. Spoiler alert. Um, that was amazing. Um, Tim and I are Formula One fans. We've not really been watching this season, have we? Have we? We've been a bit. No. We've been out at the weekends. We've missed it. But I did hear that on the old grapevine from a few weeks ago that he did the the classic pool dive at Monaco. Mm. Proper retribution for that horrible year he had where he got overtaken and he had that face on the podium. Do you remember? What? No. no, Daniel Ricardo. Daniel Ricardo is normally so smiley and really like it. Just 
so lovely oh, yes, to talk actually, to. Yeah, I do and he had that year that, at yeah. Monaco where he was on. Yeah. He looked like a wet weekend. He looked like he could murder someone, and it was just <laughs> it was such a flip. But he's made up for it now, mm. so that's the good news. Um, but good e- good day. Um, I'm sure you're watching. It's bedtime now. What time is it in Sydney? It's probably about five a.m. Yeah, is that about okay. right. Yeah, obviously Tim is Australian. Uh, you might not know from his accent because it has been somewhat yeah. neutralised. Actually, it's eleven hours difference at the minute, isn't it? So, yeah. Uh, um, is that six, seven a.m.? I can't do the maths. There we go. Four twenty-one in the morning. You're probably not up. No, you're probably not up. But when you are, but if you are, well done. <laughs> yeah, if, you, if you've gone straight through crew or you work nights, then hi. Uh, yes, please set off megawatt. Okay, you start light signals, please. I feel like Megawatt is a superhero from a movie. <laughs> I, f- I feel like I've heard the name somewhere before. It's it's kind of familiar. Oh, another straight <laughs> on! Oh! I can hear that banging. Uh, that is... Un- we have no camera in that corner either. That's the best camera angle I can give you for that one. <laughs> wow. So, Megawatt failing to turn right, straight on into the barriers. sounds very similar to what goes on with the CrossFit next door. It does a bit. <laughs> Gadoosh, when everyone drops the weights. So, this is Formula Pi. We don't intervene. We let the robot destroy itself instead. <laughs> yeah, as a couple of years ago, uh, Jeff Riley, the king of destroying robots, <laughs> managed to strip... Was he stripped a hub? Uh, we've had stripped hubs. We've had a uh, a camera destroyed. Uh, we had the uh, the IT guys with three wheels competing at one point when a wheel <laughs> went off and it just finished his lap on three wheels. Still managed to do all they're right. Actually, they're quite robust. Um, I I normally just have to tighten some screws, and that's about that's about yeah, it. Even after this onslaught um, of abuse. Mm, yeah, well, it's uh, normally the the cameras uh, put themselves out of alignment a bit and I, uh, and I need to refocus the cameras but that is about it at least uh, Aaron gets a bit of a walk to go down there stretch the legs <laughs> as long as he doesn't trip over <laughs> as long as he doesn't trip over yeah. <laughs> oh that is unfortunate mm. we have I think we've got quite a few Australian entries this year haven't we if we spread to the other side of the world maybe your parents are doing some good promotion that's possibly it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tim's from Newcastle, so kind of just around the corner from you. It's at least the same state. Well, I used to live uh, in Sydney. Um, you did used to live in Sydney. Um, well, used to where did I live? Uh, I can't forget. Lidcombe? Uh, I used to live in... Well, Lidcombe was one place. Uh, I used to live in Manly. Uh, is it DY, just around the corner from Manly? Uh, I lived in Summer Hill near the airport. I lived in Beacon Hill uh, and somewhere Parramatta. No, anyway, I don't. I don't remember. It was a long time ago. You lived everywhere. Yeah. Yeah. So there we go. That's our Sydney. I, I certainly uh, spent a lot of time driving across Sydney because I, I used to work on one side of Sydney and live on the other. That was terrible. <laughs> Why would you commute two and a half hours each each way each day? Uh, you'd have to be insane. I was insane. And now you live in the Fens where you have to commute ten minutes every day and you still moan about traffic. Well, that's true. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so that's it for, for Megawatt. Uh, not the best start, but you, you left the line, uh, which is good. It's a start. It, the line detection stuff is working. It's great. Um... So, penultimate robot now. Another new entry. Uh, and going sequentially, it appears, towards the end. Robot number 112. It is Codebreaker. And I recognise that uh, avatar. That is Mr. Alex Smith uh, from Peterborough in the UK, just up the road from us here. Uh, he's got about five years of knowledge on and off of Python, which is fine. Great start. That's all you need. We'll get going. And, uh, yeah, I've seen you in the chat this evening. I've said good evening. Uh, so, good evening again. If you're still hanging around, I don't know if you've gone off for dinner I probably would have done if I was you because it's you know it's, this is a long old feed testing is always quite a big session um, and usually we're, we're done by now but it's been a little bit long so thank you for joining us um, and hopefully we'll see you do as well tonight obviously local Peterborough just up the road from us here 
Good BMX track in Peterborough. That's my Peterborough <laughs> knowledge. You're not allowed near BMX tracks. I'm not allowed near BMX tracks. I actually injured my face uh, on a BMX track, not on a bike. Would you believe? And everyone thinks I was on my bike without a helmet, and I have to quickly correct people. No, nope, I always wear a helmet. I'm not a complete idiot. Uh, but I was. If I'd have been wearing my helmet, I wouldn't have my face in the state it is. If you want to see my face, um, <laughs> my Twitter handle is at the Tufty. I was posting pictures of my face as it got worse, better. Um, Thumb down. Didn't start with restarting. Okay, recycle, recycle. Dear, dear, full of problems today. Fingers crossed. Yeah, it's been a tricky one tonight, hasn't it? It's been really... Mm. uh... Alex says that code was pretty scrambled together with two crying (laughs) emojis. Cry laughing. Uh, So, (laughs) hopefully, it'll be fine. Uh, Fingers crossed. If not, we've got one more to go. Did it? Sorry, is that the one that went straight ahead? Yeah. That's mega one. We're on a different robot now. Right. See, even Tim is like, it's just like. Who am I? It's just another <laughs> robot. Oh. Yes, that's right. I remember. Australia's not awake yet. Nope. We thought we had that bit. This is now Alex, who nah. lives in Peterborough. Hi, Alex. Uh, who's in the chat? Uh, who says his code is pretty scrambled together. Right. With with two cry laughing emojis. <laughs> so it's fine. Uh, it's testing. That's what testing's for. Um, it's designed to be a playground for you guys and we've put in more testing this year at the request of everyone last year we were a bit testing light last year um, purely because these sessions do take quite a long time to run and yeah we end up putting the feed up for like an hour and a half and people come and go and I know it's nice you know you just to, to dip in and see how things are going but uh, yeah it's it's a long time for us to, it's a long time for me to be talking for an hour and a half without stopping as well I won't speak for another four days after this mm. Tim will get a bit of peace. There's a lot more going on in this feed than Bethesda's one. Yeah, God, Bethesda, have a word (laughs) with your marketing team and stop doing those 24 hour feeds because my anxiety can't take it. I just, I want you to just announce the products and surprise me and wake up and be like, oh look, there's a new Fallout game. Although I'm not getting too excited because I've heard rumors that Fallout 76 is not like a normal Fallout. So I'm trying okay, to swap it out, reserve my um, excitement for when Fallout 5 arrives, if that's what they call it, if they don't call it Fallout 422. I'm a gamer as well, just in case anyone wonders what I'm talking about. Fallout's one of my favorites. So that's it for Alex. Again, we will check uh, your code. We'll make sure that the robot was fine and it wasn't our fault. So that's another potential one that could go in tomorrow night's pool. I feel like we've got one and a half robots, like one and a half times the amount of robots that we had that have been moved into tomorrow night's pool, potentially. Mm -hmm. You didn't hear what I said, did you? One and a half robots? (laughs) I, I don't know. I feel like I'm we've had about tired. half about half of tonight's robots we've got to investigate. So ah. potentially we could end up with one and a half times of the robots tomorrow night. I don't think I that was see. very clear the first time I said it, to be honest with you. But um, yeah, so Alex, we'll check your code out. We'll see what's happening. Uh, yeah. He said it did work in the simulator, but presumes it was an uploading it to the F, I guess that's FTP issue. Uh, it could be. I mean, when uh, we actually do the transfer, uh, I... I did the transfer this uh, this time round. Um, oh, is this so why everything's this broken? Be my fault. <laughs> um, but uh, what we do get is uh, an indication of what files are uh, have been modified, etc. Um, so uh, I think, as far as I recall, everything was uh, uh, well. Everyone had actually modified code. Uh, sometimes we have some uh, issues and things that we we had, for example, one point. Uh, a, a permissions problem, Windows to, to Linux, which uh, I think Aaron has now sorted out in the scripts. Um, but uh, every time we do this, it's it's a new, new lesson for us. We learn something, and uh, yeah, potentially there's there's something we haven't realised, um, as you might have seen from uh, from the bugs in the spin view tonight. <laughs> well, that was operator problem. That was that was Pebcac. That wasn't that wasn't you guys. Well, no. I, what I was referring to was the uh, uh, what do you call it? The the ASCII problems. Oh, okay. You weren't referring to my inability to do as I'm told and drag things into the right place. And... UTF or whatever the thirty-two. Uh, yeah, it was uh, some ASCII wrong. conversion issue. I think we've got um, uh, three dots, and it's been 
Uh, it's a single character in our thing. We don't notice it visually, but then as soon as it's translated into the spin view, it ends up being all kinds of wrong. So we've got to fix that. Um, a spin view. I've got one more to do. Oh, Sorry. Spin view. Okay. I am waffly and all over the place tonight. So final contestant for tonight is driver number 114 team yoshi from funabashi in chiba in japan um I, why do i know chiba what's what's it famous for so it's famous for something but great to have you with us uh thanks for joining us uh they've been coding for half a year so fairly new to python and new to Formula Pi, so great to have you with us. Um, I will probably be a bit more prepared next time and we'll talk a bit more about Chiba. Now I know that we've got somebody, uh, from, I think we had Japanese competitors before. I'm trying to think about all the new parts of the world that come up every time we run this. I think we have. Memory like a sieve. So yeah, it's all gone. Me. But great to have you with us, Team Yoshi. Also appreciating the name as well. If that is a Mario reference, I salute you. If not, uh, fine as well. <laughs> yes. Okay, start light sequence, please. Okay, so Team Yoshi rounding things off tonight. Uh, hopefully we'll get a starter here and we'll see how they're doing. And Team Yoshi are away, good start. Another straight on. Ah, this is interesting. Nothing in the tracks changed, has it? I, nothing no. lighting wise, we're all the same. Very interesting, but straight on might not actually be a bad strategy because as as we saw with some of the other contestants, they go straight for the inside line. So if you went straight on, you'd probably avoid that sort of crashes. But clearly, finding the line the second lap, uh, getting around that corner without any trouble at all. So Team Yoshi here now going for their first clean lap uh, without contact with the wall. So let's see. I think it's probably going to be about 16, 17 seconds I'd put this at. Yeah, good effort. 16.19. About average. It's a good, solid lap time. Uh, put you in good contention for some good times. I think, from memory, Lambda P uh, had similar kind of consistency. They weren't the fastest robot, but they were definitely the most consistent. And I think I stressed that last year as being, well, almost every year, that consistency is key in Formula Pi. Uh, getting a good lap time that you can solidly reproduce each time, regardless of what is thrown in front of you, be it a robot or a troll bot or a wheel sometimes if they come off uh, touch wood we haven't had any wheels come off in the last year I think Tim's tightening up skills have been very very good uh, he's been using his old mechanic skills to get things all tightened up um, this is looking good though for Team Yoshi now three 16 second laps one 20 second outlier but let's see if they can keep the consistency going 16.98 great as well uh, I just realised I have all of the registration forms here in front of me and I've just failed to open them as we're going along to tell you more things about the people that are competing I'm getting back into the swing of this slowly. Uh, sorry, I'm reading. Uh, Team Yoshi is 34 years old. Oh, same age as me. Great age. This is a vintage age. Um, other relevant hobbies, they list uh, their Subaru cars being their relevant hobby. Ooh. Yes. They can definitely get into that. Uh, Tim and I are, are big motoring fanatics. We like our cars. Okay. Um, I drive a Toyota I go at the moment, so I'm not particularly you know, flashy, but it's Japanese. It's not a gazoo I go or anything. No, it's not. That would be so good. <laughs> I'd love it if it's a gazoo I go. Um, they want to hold a race in Japan as well. I, I would totally be up for going to Japan with our little portable track and running a race. <laughs> I've always wanted to go to Japan. Oh, that sounds like fun. Yeah, I reckon we could. We should. Because I'm, I'm, you know, it'd be, I, I love travelling to so seeing the world and doing some Formula Pi would be a great thing to do. Um, so that's it. Yoshi has completed their first set of laps great times there 16 to 17 seconds good solid lap times good work team yoshi uh, great to have you with us and it looks like you're going to get on fine here so that's it for tonight uh, we're done uh, join us again tomorrow night for more of the same we'll be looking at doing another uh, 11 or so competitors saving for people who uh, we investigate the code tomorrow but we will let you know during the day if there's any changes. Uh, the feed will be in exactly the same place. I'll pop up an event uh, so you can subscribe, like, follow, do all the usual youtube -y things, share it with your friends, sit down, watch it on the telly, laugh at us being incapable, and we'd love to have you with us. So thank you for joining us. Uh, it's good to be back, and we will see you all soon. Take it easy for now. Uh, bye. <laughs>